Hello, welcome to a Prehistory Guide's Prehistory Flash, bringing you quick bites from recent prehistoric archaeology news. I'm Michael Bott. And I'm Rupert Selskin. And today we're talking about Neanderthal teeth from Jersey, one of the Channel Islands. However, first, please hit the subscribe button to get the latest mm -hmm. updates. And if you have a moment, please take a look at our Patreon page. We depend upon the support of our fantastic Patreon community. And uh, if you'd consider joining them, that would be great. Thing yes, is, you also get more content too. So yes, you no brain, really. Anyway, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. What <laughs> has us popping up and flashing today? Well, well, as you said, Neanderthal teeth. It's Neanderthal teeth from uh, Jersey, actually, uh, the Cote de, uh, de saint brelard in, uh, in the southwest of the island. Mm -hmm. And and actually, these teeth were found between 1910 and 1911. So why are they in the news? news. Well, they're in, they're in the news because uh, scientists have only recently got round to doing a proper analysis of them. They were always presumed to be examples of, uh, you know, typical examples of Neanderthal teeth. Uh, but it turns out they're not. Um, they're actually hybrid. These are... Uh, the, the owners of these teeth were uh, Neanderthal and human. They also thought that they... That originally it was thought that these teeth were from one individual, but it's turned out from analysis that they belong to two mm -hmm. um, individuals so uh uh yes yes it's uh so you said that 13 teeth were found yes in yeah early uh, 20th century mm. and they were this, these weren't excavated it seems that they were no. left on a on a ledge in this cave yeah. cot um was there anything else apart from the the teeth found at the time do we know do you know that's a very good question? I don't uh, think the, I don't think the was. I, I, I don't think so. Um, I'll put a correction somewhere on the screen if I've got that mm, wrong. But uh, I, I have to confess, I've just um, I've been uh, obsessing about the teeth and the fact that they were found on a ledge, so they've been deliberately placed on the ledge, and they were I still there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> After how many years? Actually, when you think about it, was it forty thousand years? These are about forty thousand years old. Uh, yeah. Still on a ledge. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But originally, they were just thought to be purely uh, Neanderthal. Yeah. Because all the excavations... I mean, it was excavated... The cave was excavated for quite a, quite a long time. Uh, yeah. And uh, the area was in use for a very, very long time. I think we're talking about more than 100,000 years or something ridiculous like that. But it's we're a huge looking... Time, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... So Neanderthals have been around for a long time, but it's only towards the tail end of their occupation of the place or, or their occupation of, of Europe that uh, modern humans uh, are sort of in the same place at the same time. The overlap is no more than about 5,000 years. So mm. we're talking about, you know, the tail end. These are dated, mm. have been dated to 48,000 years ago. In this in this cave and originally they were thought to be neanderthal now the thing is we assumed we both assumed that when we read this in the news that the dna uh, testing had been done to establish uh, mm. this link between modern humans and neanderthal but no it wasn't a case of we've got this dna toy what can we throw at it next <laughs> to, mm. to um, break down prehistory it was actually um <laughs> what is it Com computational tomography a ct scan computed tomography <laughs> yes ct scan to you yes <laughs> <laughs> Which, in a kind of way, although we're sort of excited about the DNA stuff, as we so mm. often are, it's quite a big deal if you think about. Because uh, I don't think they, I don't think they're cheap to actually run a CT scan. You know, for you know, for whatever 
is they're used for all sorts you know those That's they're, true. They're I don't... huge machines huge tubes that uh, people get put in to well, we should probably know. find out the difference actually what, what's the price difference between doing a ct scan on something or doing a, a full dna analysis on something what is yeah. the difference i have I no idea I expect the CT scan is a bit cheaper. <laughs> that's, why it came, that's why it came <laughs> first. No, but the point about what a CT scan does, a CT scan is a big sort of three-dimensional X-ray machine. Mm. Um, and it, rather than giving you a sort of that see-through image that we associate with straightforward X-rays, it blasts X-rays from all directions, but then uses a math algorithm to extrapolate slices, actual slices, through the specimen that it's looking at. It is very clever. And it's this kind of really detailed uh, thing that they've been able to work out, you know, that no, they're not Neanderthal teeth through and through. They have Neanderthal mm. characteristics, but they also have modern human characteristics at the same time. Mm. And I think the uh, chief uh, researchers on this is a Dr. Matt Pope and... Oh, Chris Stringer. That's the one. Did I say that? Yes, you did. Really? Anyway, they're the two uh, lead investigators uh, on this. And I don't think um, they would declare this stuff in their un unless they were completely confident, A, of the provenance of the teeth in the cave, and B, that uh, the CT scanning is showing up uh, so much of a difference. They both say, obviously, they want to do DNA research on this, uh, you know, properly in the in the future. I, but, I believe that's actually happening now. Actually, I, oh, I think cool, they're cool, doing cool. the DNA analysis at the moment. Oh well, well, watch this space. But the significance mm. of this is that we've actually got a hybrid Neanderthal modern human here. Mm. And the suggestion mm. is, I mean, in brief, in my mind, is that we're looking at a, you know, a tranche of uh, 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 of people here. It is known that we, by and large, carry two to three percent uh, Neanderthal genes around in us uh, now. But were there small caches of? Uh, uh, of more hybridised humans um, back then, um, forty-eight thousand years ago. That's the question, uh, I, isn't it? Well, I, th I think it's a it's an important distinction to make. You know, we we talk about Neanderthals being driven to extinction, um, but the reality is that humans yeah. and Neanderthals overlapped for five to seven thousand years that we know of, which means yeah. that these are people living side by side. They were. They would have seen that, OK, they look a bit different because Neanderthals were squatter and kind of chunkier, I suppose, uh, with a heavier brow and all that kind of stuff. But they still just look like slightly different people. Uh, yeah. And they would have been living side by side. The fact that we've got this DNA within us all, unless you come from sub-Saharan Africa, um, uh, you know, it just shows that for thousands of years, we were living together. It's not a question of them becoming extinct. It's a question of them just uh, essentially just we, we became one species over time. Yeah. The fact yeah, that yeah, there's yeah. just a tiny amount of their DNA left is kind of academic, really. But I think that also isn't the interesting thing putting a crossover um, at this place, at this time. <sighs> that is true. Um, that that because pushes you'd... it. You'd north and it input it much more mm. into northern Europe that I think than perhaps had been thought before or you know conceived mm. Mm. before. Um, it's worth it bearing in mind, of course, that Jersey and Ireland now was then uh, attached to what is now Normandy. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's uh, although uh, Jersey is to uh, um, is to England. Um, it's uh, only a few couple of miles off the French coast. <laughs> no. I know. Let's um, not go there. Let's not yeah, do that. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> go, go figure yeah. that out. Um, mm. uh, yes, I uh, think that's the significance and, and uh, why it's exciting. You know what? I yeah. always uh, think about this. You know, genetics is a, is a funny old thing. And if there's a, uh, you know, the genes are left, in a population that you're going to get variants and 
every so often, some folk mm. are going to display strong Neanderthal characteristics. It's going to pop S- out. See them walking down the high street quite often, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think mm. that may be true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but it, it's going to be really interesting to see when the DNA analysis has been yeah. done, when those results yeah. come back, uh, to see quite how much they marry up with uh, the analysis from the CT scans. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. So, we'll, yes, we'll certainly bring you that uh, when that's available. Well, maybe we'll bring you Chris Stringer or maybe we'll bring you Matt Pope or maybe we'll bring you the both of them. Who can tell? <laughs> that would be an interesting uh, thing to try, yes. Yeah. For the moment, I don't think there's uh, anything much we can bring to the table right now, though. No, no, that's it, really. No mm. Neanderthal stroke human teeth found in a cave in Jersey 100 years ago. Now we know what they yeah. are. There you go. Hope that's piqued your interest, <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Ta-ra for now. See ya. Bye. <laughs>